You know what I have to say is very specific to San Francisco for me, and I've lived a lot of different places. Here we go. Um, <laughs> is that never before have I met so many women my age who had no interest in having children, ever. Yeah, I know. Which That's is really true. Interesting. Interesting. It's very rare. Totally like, rare. And I've yeah. lived, you know, on the East Coast, in the South, in the Midwest, up in Seattle, Olympia area, Australia, South Africa, and San Francisco is the yeah. first place where I've met women who are just like, it's not important to me. Yeah. I don't feel the need to do it. Yeah. In fact, have had boyfriends break up with them because of it. Yeah. Like, between 7th and 8th grade and 8th and 9th eight and ninth grade I was a nanny for these two little boys and they were just they were horrible I worked like nine weeks out of the summer and like 45 hours and I totally like I hated them like by the end of it and I was like too young to be working that much and way too young to have that kind of responsibility and like by the time I was 18 I totally did not want to have kids like already decided like not gonna deal with it like the little kid Scotty like used to bite me and their parents like encouraged me to <laughs> spank him. Oh my and, like, god. It was just like I was like a mom. Like they right. were gone from eight to five, nine hours a day, and I was like their mom. And I so I totally hated kids, like pretty much until I um I guess we're being candid, I got pregnant when I was like twenty three years old. I totally wanted, like, as soon as it happened, just, like, changed everything. And ever since then, like, I, I totally am one of those women. Like, I'm baby crazy. I want babies. I feel my biological clock ticking. Like, yep. you know, but, like, but I think, yeah, I totally agree. I think San Francisco specifically is just a lot of, I, I don't know, I mean, like, I hate to say it, like, a lot more educated, like, kind of Career higher driven. social status. Yeah, um, women, and I just think that, like, I don't think they need to have children right away. You're the most career-minded person I know, and I know that you love children and want children. Like, I would totally give it up. Like, I need to. I always need to use my mind, but like, of course, in a second. But like, and for me, I don't feel like I want children in any way. I, except all of a sudden, I like voraciously want a dog. Like every time. I'm, <laughs> like, I'm like, hopefully, a lot of women do this because it's pretty psychotic. But you kind of hope you're going to get pregnant on accident because you would like to have that family and you know you're not allowed to plan it. Yeah. And um, and I totally did that. And even though I was, I was always careful or whatever. Yeah. Um, I but I think totally the, feel you. I think oh the key, I, I think totally it, do not. I feel it's a sign. <laughs> I feel it's a sign of my <laughs> wisdom and maturity that I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? I, that that I. If I'm going to have children, it's going to be a calculated decision. And I can't imagine making that decision because right now I'm not ready. And I actually know You know, I have to say that it's actually changed for me. It's become opposite. Really? Because in my 20s, like, I wasn't ready for kids. I didn't want them. I wanted to travel. I wanted to be able to just have my own schedule, do whatever I wanted, and the whole thing. And that's what I did. For the, all of my 20s, I moved every six months. Or, yeah, I guess the longest ever was in one place was Sydney, Australia, mm -hmm. for two years. And I did my own country. Um, and was super careful with boyfriends and stuff like that. And now I'm at the point of like, well, God, I'd like to have kids by the time I'm 35. I've got five years left. Mm. I know. So what is, what is it, it about 35? 35? 35 is like, because if you have children before at 35 or before 35, it's, it's better. Well, it's yeah. It's healthier. It's easier. It's, I want to, I don't want to be an old mom. I don't want to right. be a mom either. having my a kid, my first kid at 40. I feel like when I, when I've been in that space, which has been a lot of my twenties where I feel like. Um, I'm running out of time, or I think I know who the person is. <laughs> then I become I become like in love with a, an idea or a fantasy. Mm -hmm. Like it's not really the person. So kind of like what Megan has said, and what it sounds like your friends were saying. When you're more real with yourself, or at least for me, when I am more real with myself about who's actually sitting across the table from me, or who I actually am, and what I bring to the table. Then I get more clear on the fact that it doesn't have to happen now. And, yeah. you know, like, I actually have this friend, Ginger. Hi, Ginger, if you're watching, mm -hmm. which she won't be. But she, from home, and she ended up marrying the guy that we went to high school with. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I thought it was such a dumb decision, you know. And we had other friends who were getting married at the same time, and one of our good friends um, got a divorce. And I was sitting around, and I was just kind of amazed, because this girl, Holly, was such a, she was so committed like she always followed things through and the marriage did not end because of Holly's lack of effort it ended because her husband cheated on her all the time um, and I was like what do you think Holly was thinking when she got married and Ginger said the single most brilliant thing anyone has ever said, said to me about marriage and it blew me away she said when I married Mikey Mikey being the name of her husband when I married Mikey I walked down the aisle and I was marrying the man that was standing at the end of that aisle and she said when Holly married Heath she was marrying the person he she wanted for Heath to become 
Yeah. She said, if you have to be, like, you have to be ready to marry the person who's right there. And I was yeah. like, wow. That makes know, so much like, sense. How old was she when she said that? 25, 26. Well, what in particular about sex do you, like... Well, I mean, we sort of touched on the women who can't. Yeah. And feeling bad for them. and But I guess, you know, what does sex mean at different ages? What does sex mean now? Can I just tell you that right now I am at my sexual peak? And, like, I totally <gasps> was doing research on it because you're not supposed to until you're, everyone's like, no, you have to be <laughs> If I'm not, I am so much higher. But you know what? Like, honestly, I started reading about it because I was like, something is going on. I love how me. she like, researches everything that, like, I know. My lashes. My, I'm going to Exactly. Like, seriously, Cat that's when you're, like, when you're right, glued right, to right. computer all day, that's what happens. You Google everything. No, you but, what? Like, what was that? I Google. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but like, I seriously was Product like, placement. I wanted, I want to fuck all the time. Like, I seriously just like, I, I know, I seriously think I'm the horniest person alive. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, you got competition you got right no. here. Oh, oh, but, but, oh, 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 oh. some are the ones who want to have kids and want to be in a stable relationship. Know, we're like, wanna... horny, horny, horny. But this is the thing. What research I did, I found, because everyone was saying you're, like, supposed you're to be. You're cutting that out. <laughs> but I think what we're establishing here that it is a total fallacy that it's, get that's just guys who want sex all the time. No. I have no. relationships no. where I've wanted it far Way more, more than, than the did. guy. I know. And you're just like, what the? Okay, but okay, so to be in your blood, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> like this relationship. I would argue when blood. anyone feels pressured, though, because I know for sure, like the last long relationship that I had was the. I mean, we were together for almost three years, and it was horrible. The sexual part was like the reason that it didn't work out, and the reason huh. was, I think it was a confidence. I think it was a confidence issue. I think he wasn't confident somehow, and if I didn't have an orgasm, like. Within the first thirty minutes or or forty five minutes or whatever, then he was devastated. That and if, is so oh yeah, pathetic. That, and if he was devastated, like having some should... massage, there you go. Give me a vacuum break. Get over this is about yourself, you? basically. Yeah. You know, how Pretty many much. guys have you had to be like? Baby, I still had a really yeah, good it's time. Fine. Like it's still it feels good. It's or fine. Like don't it. because oh, fake it. Raise your hand. I've never faked. All to make them sisters. feel better. Just That's to right. And just or no, just to get it to get it over, over with. <laughs> Done. Oh my like, god, it's so not always about that. that. But I right. didn't do that for the longest time because I would just be like, I'm not gonna pretend that it was like a, a like a moral standing. Like I would not. No, exactly. But then eventually, like you don't like, want to be one of those girls, but because what you said, it was just like get it fucking over with. Well, that <laughs> do part of it. The other well, part is it starts to go dry. It does after a while. Exactly. It's just not gonna happen. I'm just not into it. I mean, like it's one thing. You're like totally into it, but it like I mean it's you're using a lot of muscles and a lot of energy. <laughs> Legs get sore. And, and, and it's not, not and it does, it's not always it's about guys, it's not always yeah. about the result. Like no, it's about the experience, it's, the it's, process. It's, it's, right. Exactly. exactly. It's not and if you get what you want, you're not gonna get the result. Right. If you if I get what I want out of the process, then that's it. Then yeah. sometimes that's enough, and yeah. sometimes it's not. But sometimes it is. Yeah. I compromise with um, a boyfriend that I had for a while that he would just always go down first and then we would have sex because then it was like guaranteed orgasm and then I would often multiple like we'd have sex and I would come again but like it wasn't necessarily a guarantee he was good (laughs) (laughs) I multiple but like not that quickly not in one well so he went down that's like a guaranteed orgasm and then it'd be like another half hour okay well then that's I've done that I don't do nobody does that Six times in five minutes thing. I don't believe in that. My mother. You can do a quick turnaround. Like I've done a couple, two or three times. Like your, mom. your mother told you that. Oh, your mom yeah. says. My mom has told me some highly yeah, inappropriate things. She does. She does. Yeah. 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 My mom now, told me to to drive the car before I buy it. Because <laughs> exactly. she didn't. Her first husband. She didn't. And oh, like yeah. she was extremely yeah. disappointed. You know what's interesting about this. Um, this guy, this 26 year old who's interested in just, you know, friends with benefits, whatever, is that he does not want, he doesn't, obviously would not restrict me from being with other people, but he does not want to know about it. It's the sort of thing, of like, and he's had this with other girls too, like he just, if he thinks about the girl being with another guy, then like it leads to this jealous feeling or something like that, but even though he says that he doesn't love these people and mm-hmm. he doesn't want to commit to them. It's interesting, though. See, and I would be totally open to that. The last boy that I just stopped seeing was, like, completely against just being fuck buddies. <laughs> like, he was okay yeah, with just being... <laughs> I, but I, I don't understand. Like, that I don't understand. Like, 
I mean, I know as a girl I can pretend and I can say, like, I can totally handle it, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But, like, you know, obviously not. But guys usually can, right? I mean, I would assume. No. Well, I think it's, no. I can tell you, like, yeah. my personal experience is men are the most easily attached simple creatures. <laughs> simple, simple oh, creatures. Yeah. I really believe that. I really believe that. I think that men are, have the societal standards where they, they can't, um, emote and then when suddenly they feel like they can if you take it away from them they're like fucking devastated right so in my experience it's always been like you try to be upfront with the person you try to let them know this like what's going on so that you don't get the wrong idea and then it's like when you suddenly don't want that and and i feel like i've been upfront with a lot of people no it's not oh it doesn't work it's like it's like have the most yes they have it's such a female it's such a female experience but to me, I've seen it replicated in men way more than in women. Yeah, because it's, it's right. much better than having that thing of, I'm not good enough, which is what oh most God, women yeah, or most oh, people think. Oh, you know that I just got to a place in my life where instead of asking myself, do you think he likes me? I've gotten to where I say, do I really like this guy? That's and that awesome. is like the most revolutionary shift in thinking I have ever had in my life. Period. Amen. Amen. It changes absolutely everything. What changed? Um, I think I noticed, I went out, it wasn't even a date, I went out with this guy who works for my dad, or his he, his company contracts with my father's dental company, and he lives in Marin, and we went out to the marina, which is like a place that I typically don't feel that comfortable, it's just not my thing, right. and um, while we were out, that's a nice way of saying it, it yes, <laughs> I fucking it's hate not, that place, it's not my thing. <laughs> I, just, I, I don't particularly so, personally feel comfortable there, I felt so oh. uncomfortable, and I noticed in my uncomfortability, and uncomfortability, I started to need some sort of affirmation. Now, I didn't realize this was happening at the time, right? But So I felt uncomfortable, and I was looking to him to sort of reinforce that I was okay, like that there was something okay about me. And by the time I got home, I was like, I wonder if he likes me. And then a day later, I was like, I'm absolutely not interested in this man. He drives an Audi. He puts more product in his hair than I do. He's very nice. But he's not the kind of person that I want to date. And that was when it hit me that I had always been asking, does he like me? Without asking, do I like him? When was this? Oh, this was like a couple months ago. Maybe six months ago.